Hi, this is Mr. Dulis, and I'm going to go over the Kirchhoff's rules with you on circuits, specifically the loop, loop rule and junction rule. And I'm going to go over an example from the Princeton Review uh, prep book for AP Physics 1, the 2015 edition. First off, we have, and this is in no order, so you can use these rules in whatever order you need. The loop rule says that the sum of all potential differences that travels any closed loop in a circuit must be zero. And so potential differences, it's the same thing as voltage. So if I increase the potential difference, I increase the voltage. And those can be positive and negative values. If you go across a battery, so that way the current is moving in a positive direction across a battery, uh, it's going to bump up the voltage into a positive voltage versus if I'm following current that is going across a battery into a negative direction, and you can do that. If you're going from the positive to negative end of the battery and current is flowing in that direction through the battery, and it can do that because of a secondary battery, then it would be a voltage drop in that case. So that's just one example. And so the loop rule says that within a, any closed loop, your voltage total has to be zero. The junction rule says, and it's also known as the node rule, says that the total, total current, and please take note that we're talking about current, and up here we're talking about voltages, the total current that enters a junction must be equal to the total current that leaves the junction. All right, so let's look at this example from our Princeton Review text. Here we have a circuit that uh, you would find on page 254 of the Princeton Review practice exam uh, book. And I've gone ahead and labeled the different sections. So I have uh, these batteries here, battery one and battery two. And notice that we have a, a current that's trying to go to the left for the first one and a current that's trying to go to the right on the second one. But also take note of their relative voltages. So one is certainly more, uh, has more potential difference than the other. So it will overpower it. Also, I've labeled the uh, branches, or excuse me, I've actually labeled the, the nodes or junctions as A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I also have the resistors. So I have resistor 1, 2, and 3 uh, that are 10, 20, and 30 ohms respectively. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, look across the circuit. And look at how the current is flowing. So again, from battery one, the current wants to flow in this sort of direction. It's going to flow down here, and it's going to go across the resistor, and it's going to get to junction C. Once it gets to junction C, however, I want you to notice that we have this other battery, which wants current to flow in this direction, but something needs to give. It is not going to just flow in this direction. Not only, because the current from battery one is going to actually overpower any potential difference because of battery two, and it's actually going to flow from left to right across this branch here. So it's going to actually flow in this direction, and it's going to even go across that battery into a effectively negative direction for that battery. So let's label this. We have, this is going to be current 1, and this over here will be current 2. Which means that going across resistor 2, because of the junction rule, here at junction C, we will apply that rule where we have current 1 coming in, and coming out, we have both current 2 and whatever's left over, which logic would tell you that what's left over would be current 1 minus current 2. So that's what's actually going across resistor 2 is current 1 minus current 2. Let me go ahead and put parentheses around that just to, just to show. So on the left part of the loop here we have current 1. On the right part of the loop here we have current 2. And down the middle coming up and in this direction specifically we have current 1 minus current 2. So that's what we have in terms of current, and that is applying the junction rule across junction C. So that is our junction rule. Next, we are going to apply the loop rule. 
and I'm going to switch colors for that. So the loop rule we're going to apply, apply first, let's say going from F to A, B and C and back to F. So that's how we're going to apply the loop rules across that loop, starting at F and finishing F, uh, going from F, A, B, C and back to F. So with that, we're saying that the, any voltages that are bumped up across that loop will be also bumped down from any other device. So if one device is my battery, so I'll say that those are going to all sum to zero. So let me go ahead and put the zero in, and I'll say that all, all these things sum to zero. So let me start with the battery. So the battery one, or voltage caused by object one, device one, that will be positive specifically, will then come down and go across from B to C. So as it goes from B to C and goes across this resistor, what's it going to do? It's going to be a voltage drop. And it's going to be a voltage drop of a value of IR. Specifically, it's going to be I1 times R1. So that's going to be current 1 times resistor 1. That's the voltage drop because, remember, Ohm's law says that V is equal to IR. And so with that statement, we're then going to also go from C to F. There's going to be another voltage drop, but in this case, it's going to be the current that is going through there, which is I1 minus I2, I need to put that in parentheses because we're going to multiply it by that resistor that it's going across. The resistance of that resistor, which is specifically 20 ohms. And that shows, then now we're back to F and we're back to where we started. So I've shown that the voltages, the additional voltages, let me even put a little addition there. The added voltages are equal to any subtracted voltages across that that loop. And so now what I can do is I can uh, go ahead and substitute any values in there. So I have uh, 0 is equal to the 20 volts, and I'm not going to put uh, any units. I'm going to only keep my variables. So it's minus I1. Let's see, uh, resistor 1 is 10 ohms. Let me go ahead and put that in front. So we've got 10 ohms times the I1 and minus I1 minus I2, in parentheses, of course, and times R2. Actually, sorry, I'm putting my, my numbers here. So R2 is uh, 20 ohms, and I could, of course, put that before my parentheses, but it's all the same. And so let me go ahead and uh, break that down. I'm going to distribute the, uh, the 20 here uh, through the parentheses. Let me go ahead and do that and... Uh, and say some time. All right, so I just quickly went ahead and distributed that part. Uh, notice here I have a negative 20i and a positive here because we have a double negative that was happening there. So just make sure that you're keeping track of your positives and negatives. And if I subtract 20 by each side, and let me go ahead and add in, let me take this time to add together uh, the 10 and 20 I, but they're both negative, so it's going to give me a negative 30 I1 plus 20 I2. And let me go ahead and multiply each side by negative 1 to simplify things a little bit for me or make it look a little neater. And also divide each side by 10. So if I do that, I'm going to get that 2 is equal to uh, let's see, that'll be 3i1 minus 2i2. All right, so that's the sum of changes in voltages across the loop on the left side with battery 1. And now I want to look at the sum of changes on the right side with uh, the loop that has battery 2 in it. So if I go back up, and remember that the sum of change in voltage is always 0. So I'm going to be now looking... Uh, in this loop here, let's say I go from, in fact, let me start from C in this case. I'll start from C, and I'll go to C to D, E, and F, and back to C. So that's going to be how I go. I'm going to start from C in this case, and I'm going to check that loop in the exact same sort of way. Let me go ahead and consolidate this stuff a little bit. All 
my, I'm not going to get rid of it, but I'm just going to make it really small just in case I need it again later. And this stuff here, I will bring up to the top. And I'm definitely going to need that later. All right, so let me go ahead and do the same procedure. And this is for, uh, that's for loop F, A, B, and C. And so now I'm going to do for loop C, D, E, and F. Okay. So now, again, we're going to say that the sum of all voltages is equal to zero, starting from C. And as I start across this loop, I'm going to go across resistor 3 to start. And since we have current 2, I'm going to say that it's going to be I2 R3, but notice that it's a voltage drop. So it's going to be a negative I2 R3. It's going to go across, and it's then going to go across the battery. But remember, this side of the battery is going to have more voltage than this side of the battery. So that means that it's going to be a voltage drop as it goes across the battery because it's going to cross the battery in a negative direction. So I'm going to say negative, or say minus, excuse me, voltage uh, or battery two. And then we are then going to be coming in this direction against the current. We've got to go against the current in this case. And so as we go in this direction, we're going to be going across the resistor. And we are, again, because we are going against the current, it's going to be a voltage bump as we go across the resistor in a negative direction. So when you're going into a, uh, when you're going across the battery in an abnormal direction, then it's going to do the opposite of what it normally would. And same thing with the resistor. If you're going across the resistor, we know that there's more voltage on this side of the resistor than on this side. So it's going to be a voltage jump in this case. So we're going to add the voltage of I1 minus I2, because that is the current flowing through that. And that's going to be times R2. And all that is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and plug in our values for the resistors again. And just to save time, let me do that. All right, so I just plugged in my values for the uh, 30 ohm resistor. I think I made a little bit of a mistake there. So this should be I2, excuse me. So this is my 30 ohm resistor. This is I2. So I just transpose those two around. Uh, the voltage of battery 2 is 10 volts. I have the 20 ohm resistor, which goes here, and I1 minus I2. Okay, so now with that, there we go. Okay, so now with that, I can go ahead and take the same approach that I did before. I'll add each side, uh, add 10 to each side. So I'll say that 10 is equal to uh, negative, let me rewrite that better, negative 30 I2 plus, and I'm, let me go ahead and distribute the 20. So I've got uh, 20 I1 minus 20 I2. And I will divide each side by 10. So that gives me 1 equals negative 3 I2 plus 2 I1 minus 2 I2. And let's see if there's anything else I can do. I can uh, add the 2i2 functions here. So I've got, in that case, I'm going to have a negative 5. So 1 equals negative 5i2 plus 2i. 2i1. Or I maybe it would be a little bit neater if I move those two around. So it would be... 2i1 minus 5i2. That looks a little bit neater. So that should work. All right, so lastly, let's solve. I have two unknowns, and now I have two equations. I have i1 and i2 are my unknowns, and obviously you see my two equations. This equation on the left being the one where we had, uh, I believe that was battery 1 that's on the left, 20-volt battery. 
So that's this is going to be for V1, and this is going to be for the loop of V2, if, just in case you don't remember which loop was which loop. So this was the loop on the left on over here, and this was the loop on the right. So with that said, let's go ahead and solve one of these two equations uh, for one of the variables and insert that and substitute in for the other. So let's say that I take 1 plus 5i2 equals 2i1, and then divide each side by 2, and so here I've got this is equal to i1. So 1 plus 5i2 over 2 gives me i1, and I'm going to take that and substitute that in for i1 over here. So I've got 2 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 5i2 over 2, close my parentheses, and let me move that over so that way I've got more space. And that's minus 2i2. Okay, so now I've only got one variable within my equation I can solve for. So I've got to distribute. So 2 is equal to uh, 3 halves plus 15 i2 halves, if you will. So I've just gone ahead and distributed the uh, the 3 throughout, and I separated it. That would be a little bit easier to see. Uh, again, minus 2 i2. Uh, let's see, the easiest thing for me to do is to multiply each side by 4, excuse me, to multiply each side by 2, so we get rid of the denominator here, so I have 4 is equal to uh, 3, excuse me, plus uh, 15i2, so that gets rid of the denominator, minus, let's see, I multiply that by 2 as well, so that gives me 4, I2. Okay, so I just multiply each side of the equation by 2, and let me extend here, and now I just want to solve for I2, so I have, let me subtract each side by 3, so I have 1 is equal to 11 I2, so I just took the uh, 15 and subtracted 4, and divide each side by 11, so 1 11 is equal to I2. So this solves for one of my unknowns. Now that I know what I2 is, it is 1 11th. Let me bring that up here. That way I can erase this other stuff and, and work back to where I started. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me erase some of this other stuff and come back up. So I2 is equal to 1 11th. And I'm going to take that, and I can go right back to my original equation here, and I can put that in for i2. So I can say that 2 is equal to 3i1 minus 2 times 1 11. Right, let me just put in that sort of a parenthesis form. There we go, like that. And now I just solve for i1. So let me add the 2 times 1 11th to each side, but it's going to be 2 plus basically 2 elevenths. That equals 3i1. And then I'll divide each side by 3. So I'll have 2 thirds plus uh, 2 elevenths divided by 3, which is the same thing as 2 over 33. That is equal to I1, and and just to keep some fractions for fun, I'll multiply the, uh, this by 11, so it'll be 22 30 thirds plus 2 30 thirds. So I've got 24 30 thirds is my e answer for I1, and I can put that in a decimal form. Let me do that. So that gives me a value of uh, 0 0.73, if I'm going to use any significant figures, amps. And that is equal to, again, I1. And the 1 11th is I2. This is equal to 0 0.09. So those are my answers. Uh, 
uh, 0.73 amps and 0.09 amps for current one and two respectively. All right, now we're almost done. Let's look at our diagram from the last time. And I've found the current that is going through, in fact, let me change the color that we can see. I found the current that is going through this section here, I1. I found the current that is going through this section here, I2. Lastly, I just need to find the current that is going through this section down the middle, which is I1 minus I2, easy enough. And from there, I would be able to find anything else that I needed to find about the circuit So once I know the current going through each section. So the current that is going through resistor 2 is going to be, again, equal to I1 minus I2, which is, in this case, going to be equal to uh, 0.64 amps. So that gives us the current going through each section of wire using Kirchhoff's rules. So hopefully that uh, helped out a bit. Remember that you know, when I had started off and I had said that I was going to go from, uh, I believe I started from F and I went this way to make this loop, that was completely arbitrary. I could have started here at point B and gone around this loop in that direction. Same thing here. I had started at point C. It was completely arbitrary. I could have started anywhere else. I could have started at point E and gone in this direction. But it doesn't really matter. You can go in any way. In fact, I could also go around the outside completely, the outside perimeter, and the same would be true along that section, along that loop. So any voltage addition across that section would be the, equal to any uh, voltage subtraction. So with that, uh, hopefully it helped. If you need any help, you can email me. And you guys have a good one. Bye.